Hey everyone, Tracy here. It is Sunday afternoon in my studio on a beautiful sunny autumn day here in Australia. And this week I had a lovely surprise when Meaden uh, sent me some gifts. Uh, I had actually used the brand before uh, when I was in Vietnam earlier in the year uh, on a retreat and I have their little watercolour kit which is fabulous. Um, so versatile, easy to travel with, uh, all the little colours fan out here, I believe it's 42 colours, you've got your little um, pad to wipe your brush on and um, the colours are beautiful, they're vibrant and it's easy to use and great to travel with. So when Meaden approached me to see if uh, I would like to try out some more of their products, I said sure. That'd be fantastic. I've never actually had a brand send me products before. Um, although I've been doing this for like 12, 14 years now. And um, I think that I'm probably responsible for thousands and thousands of um, bottles of Dale Rani acrylic inks <laughs> being sold. I've never actually received a, a gift like this. So I'm going to share with you what I did with the uh, gift that they have sent me. I think there's some more coming, but this is a... 24 color gouache paint set. Um, it is um, marketed as a student brand, um, so perhaps great for your sketchbooks or for traveling. Um, and 24 beautiful colors, as you can see in there. Um, and what I was interested in, I've actually not used gouache very much before. I did use a little bit, I have another kit, um, and I used it a little bit while I was in Vietnam, but in the end, that was a um, uh, sketching tour, um, an urban sketching tour that I was on with the wonderful Maru Godas and we were moving so fast from place to place and I'm not uh, an urban sketcher and I really didn't know anything about how to pack things or how to take things with me or how to put things in tiny containers. So I took this big old, um, uh, big old pack of gouache which was so impractical that I couldn't take it anywhere with me when we were going off site uh, so I really didn't get to use it very much at all. Um, I wanted to see not only how the colours worked, I do have acrylic gouache which is a blend of acrylic and gouache. Um, for those of you who don't know gouaches, I'm not an expert obviously because I haven't used it a lot but what I have read is that it is like um, kind of like an opaque watercolor. So it's water-based and so it doesn't dry permanent. It doesn't have any acrylic binders in it. Um, and so it works more like a watercolor, but it has like an opaque, you know, kind of more creamy matte finish. So a lot of illustrators love working with gouache. Um, so I wanted to see not only what the colors were like, what they did on the paper, because they also sent me some paper, they sent me some watercolor paper which is um, 300 GSM and it's a block, which is lovely. So you can actually paint right on the block and then you separate the page off later. Um, so I wanted to see how the colors worked, how the paint coverage worked, what it felt like on my brush. Um, but then I also wanted to, because I can't help myself, I have to put other ingredients into the pot. <laughs> One of those cooks that throw a little bit of everything in and I don't really measure anything, um, but my food turns out pretty well and my paintings mostly do. So I like to kind of throw a few other ingredients in when I'm painting as well. So I uh, threw in some acrylic inks and a little bit, did I do the acrylic paint? No, just some acrylic inks and some pencil um, and came up with a little abstract piece. I didn't intend to create a piece. I was just going to make some marks and swatch some colors, um, but I got a bit carried away. And in the end, this is what we came up with out of this session. So I'm going to share that with you now um, and you know some little pointers along the way and what I think about the Meaden gouache set and um, I hope you enjoy the video and if you've been watching me for a while you've been noticing that I have been posting every week um, I've been sometimes working in my sketchbook sometimes posting little tutorials so please if you've enjoyed them go ahead and like and subscribe and you can also find a link um, down below in the description to all of my online classes. I think I have 13 now on my website at all price points and all levels. And I also have a great uh, community going over on Patreon where I share exclusive video tutorials and prompts and um, candid chats and honest Zooms and all kinds of things like that as well. So I'd love for you to join me over there or in one of my classes as well. Um, or just watch me on YouTube, whatever works for you. Okay. 
Bye for now. I hope you enjoy the video. Hey everyone, Tracy here, and today I'm going to have a little bit of a play with the brand Meaden. Um, this, these have been sent to me as a gift by Meaden to uh, explore with, to see what I can do with them. So they've sent me the uh, 300 GSM 12 inch by 9 inch watercolor paper, 100% cotton, and then they've also sent me a set of 24 colors of gouache. Um, which look rather yummy. Um, so I'm really keen to see what I can create with these and also how they might work with some of the other uh, materials that I that I use more often like acrylic inks, uh, fluid acrylics, oil pastels, pencils, etc. Um, I haven't used gouache. I've used them a tiny, tiny little bit. I went to Vietnam uh, in January with the wonderful illustrator Maru uh, Godas um, on a tour with Anna Barnes and we were working some of the time in gouache but the kit that I took with me was not really a travel kit and I really am not a um, an urban sketcher and that was what the whole retreat was about and what Maru teaches so I was really learning from everyone else in that retreat but um, I didn't really use my gouache very much um, mainly because I took a box that was too big and I couldn't carry it with me everywhere. So uh, what I do have from Eden is this little watercolor travel kit um, which is so great and lightweight and has I think 42 colors um, but yeah this this is actually fantastic. The colors are lovely, they're great for travel, it's easy to carry um, and yeah you've got your little brush wiper thing here um, so you just need a little tiny container of water and you're good to go. With the um, the watercolor paper, I've just opened it up and realized that it is in fact a block, um, which is actually quite nice. And usually some of the more expensive watercolor papers come on a block. Um, this is just a protector sheet, I imagine. So with the block watercolor paper, rather than a pad or different than a pad, it actually has four sides glued down. And then there's always a little, with a little piece that is not glued down. So we're going to just take this top page off. And then I'm going to go ahead and play on the piece of paper. And so you leave it on the pad, on the block and then later on take it off. Um, so this way you don't have to tape it down. Um, okay, so let's get these opened up. And I don't know what I'm going to do today. I just, as I said, I want to have a play and I might just test them out and see what we can do with them on their own and then what we can do with them with some other medium as well. So let's just have a look at the colors. Now they are advertised as non-toxic. They're also advertised as student grade. So, you know, perhaps they might be a great addition to a travel kit if you have a little um, travel container, an empty travel container that you can put the separate paints into. I'm gonna go straight for the, for the pink. I'm just going to start with pink on the page. I want to see how the colors look and I want to see nice. Yeah, that's a beautiful pink. And as I said, I'm just going to play, get some different marks happening. and see where we go with it. Bamboo skewer is one of my favorite tools. Those of you who've been following me for a while will know that. Just getting some textural stuff happening. It feels nice. 
It feels creamy. It doesn't feel cheap. Pigment is vibrant. Okay, let's try another color. Let's bring something in that's similar. This is rose. And bring up my one inch brush. It's a little bit grainy in the pull out. And as I said, you know, I'm not, I'm not a gouache user. And so I really am just figuring my way through this. And this is how we learn, you know, if you have something new, I want you to just play with it and just think to yourself, what will it do? You know, what, what can I achieve with this? So this is a lovely effect here of that more fluorescent pink coming through. Okay, let's bring in a cobalt blue. Actually, no, let's bring in a, Verid a Viridian green. Let's do that. And if you're wondering why I'm working straight onto the paper, it's something I feel really comfortable doing. Um, I allow a lot of my mixing and my color my emerging color palette to happen on the actual painting. Because I work with a lot of layers, sometimes the colors are formed by the dry color underneath and the new color that's placed on top. So rather than blending them together, it's a matter of one being overlaid on top of the other. Beautiful, creamy texture. Really nice. And it feels like it has a good drag, a good pull, and quite a long lasting stroke. There's quite a bit of paint still on there. What will happen if I bring this over pink? Nice. I want to see also what might happen if I add in a little bit of pencil. And this is just a Carbothello pencil. All pencils will react differently. Let's try a little bit of Holbein and fresh green. And then let's bring some, let's see, we'll go back to the cobalt blue. Ooh, that's lovely. Pull that out. It's a beautiful color, it actually, I'm going to try the ultramarine in a minute because this reminds me a lot of the golden light ultramarine. Okay, so if I paint fairly opaquely, it's going to completely go over what's underneath. But if I bring more of a wash over, then I'll be able to see some of those underlayers. So I have both of those choices. Let's bring this down here. And that pencil actually resists quite beautifully through a light wash. That I didn't expect that. It's usually something that you see with an oil pastel. Nice. really just having fun and staying in a in a zone of what if 
All right, so talking about what if, what if I take a little bit of antelope brown in the, acrylic ink and drop it nice so this this is actually showing me that the paper is actually quite quite lovely it's taking the ink really well I feel like this reminds me of a little bit of watermelon now <laughs> so you can see that where the gouache is dry we're getting a different effect than where the gouache is Um, sorry, <laughs> where the gouache is dry, we're getting a different effect than where the gouache is wet. I sometimes forget how to speak when I'm in the zone of creating and exploring. Okay. Just playing around with this watermelon theme. Let's see where it takes us. Okay. I'm going to bring in a little bit of white. in the gouache. And I'm going to pick some of that white up. Where's my tissue? Paper towel. Always need a paper towel. Okay. Take a bit of the white and I'm going to run it across here. Just one thing I'm wanting to see what happens, how it mixes and what the mixing kind of capability of the white is, because I do tend to use a lot of white um, and I tend to overlay it to push back other colors. And the other thing I'm doing is just um, trying to isolate that little watermelon shape just, just because, just because it might disappear soon. Okay, so that's nice. If I bring a bamboo skewer into that, I can can add in some little graffiti shapes. Beautiful, those beautiful pops through to the pink underneath. Okay. So at this point I have no idea what I'm doing with this piece. That's often how I work. I'll start off playing and then something will emerge and maybe I'll go with it or maybe it'll just stay abstract. Um, I have this pink on my brush. I have this white over here. I want, when I add something in that's different to anything, even if I'm playing, I always have to move it around to another section. So this may turn out to just be a really interesting abstract as I'm playing with these colors. And because it's kind of heading in that direction, I probably don't want to add lots and lots and lots of different colors. I'll probably end up doing some color, color squatch. <laughs> It's very hard to speak when you're in, in creative mode. I'll end up doing some color swatching in another video, I believe. All right, I'm going to take a little bit of this cobalt and bring it down here. Perhaps get my brush a little wet. Ooh, see what happens when I mix it with the antelope brown. All those really subtle, beautiful neutral shades. I love this color, this antelope brown, because of what it brings me in being able to create such beautiful neutrals with the other colors on the palette. Okay, I'm going to try this color here, which is just called Portrait Tone. 
and I'm going to see what happens if I bring a bit of that in over this area up here and down here and then I think I also want to play a little bit with the yellow ochre Maybe I'm going to have to let the um, watermelon go. I think I am going to have to let it go. Okay. Because what I'm really interested in doing now is seeing what other kind of neutrals I can make. Um, so I might even play with a little bit of the orange acrylic ink, which is my favorite. Pop it in here and there. And while things are still a little wet, ooh, look at that, it's nice. Really just going on intuition here and instinct. So it's a really great practice to play around with mixing, not just wet in wet or uh, wet on dry, but to kind of wait for different opportunities of drying, you know, different, different colors are drying at different rates on here. And mixing will be completely different when you mix with something that's almost dry, something that's dry or something that's wet. You know, if I pop this into here, it's going to do something completely different than if I, for example, go over to an area that's quite dry. Of course, the color is different because I'm working with different colors, but it's also the consistency of what's happening when you scrub the new color over the semi-dry color. I'm always trying to vary what I'm doing. And so for a little while, I might be doing some scrubby blending and then I might do some more delicate marks. Then I might scratch through. Then I might drop some ink on top. So I'm not getting caught in the same marks over and over again. I'm also trying to vary shapes, which is another thing that I do all the time. So if I've brought in a long shape down here, next thing I'm going to come to that color and do a different kind of shape. And I'm just noticing and I'm aware of how it's mixing with the colors underneath. Then I might just pull in some kind of motif. taking advantage of the colors that are underneath. Okay, let's be brave <laughs> and say goodbye to the watermelon. Now, of course, I may leave some pops of that color through there because this is a beautiful, transparent, bright pop. And everything else is feeling lovely and muted. The orange is another pop, but you know, we want a bit of a, a blend of all things. And I just love seeing what colors are created when you mix different things together that are on the page already. You're working like this, you could work just keeping your brush dirty and moving from one to the other to see what happens. Or you could rinse off a little bit in between. Just going to leave some little peek throughs. 
my brush in the water to get things flowing a little more. If there's an area that I don't like when I'm working, I always try not to completely scrub the area out. So I've left this little ledge here, this little ridge. Um, because every part of your painting is a part of the protest, the protest, <laughs> sometimes it's a protest, is a part of the process. And I think it's kind of important to keep it. All right, I'm just gonna take this little drip of orange and wet it a touch and maybe let it drip over the gouache. You know, just be aware that you can play for as long as you want. Just, you know, stay in that state of of curiosity and openness. I've got a picture of my daughter in front of me <laughs> uh, that I'm going to sketch later on. So she's coming into this little, I'm just scratching her into this little piece here. And again, might stay, might not stay. Just take the opportunity to work with whatever you have, whatever takes your fancy and stay open to what will come. Let me just pull you in a little. There she is. <laughs> All right. Okay, got a little bit of paint up here that still needs to be moved around. And look, overall, these are, these are good. I'm enjoying working with them. There's, there's no complaints here. Colors are great. Coverage is great. I'm enjoying the way they blend together. The inks are layering nicely over the top. I'm going to pull some more white through this section here. Bit, my brush is a little more wet right now, so that's interesting. Kind of scrubbing. This is feathering out really nicely here. I feel like it's a bit bottom heavy with these dots the way that they are. So I might push some of that back as well.
again, just really, really playing with these beautiful neutrals that I'm making with the addition of the Antelope Brown. And if I do make a color that I like, I will tend to kind of pull it somewhere else as well. Really nice things happening through here that I'm going to leave, that I'm not going to touch. And then I'm going to add a pop of this um, teal in the golden fluid. Or shall I add some yellow? Actually, let's do some yellow first. Let's stick with the gouache and we'll do some lemon yellow up here mm, it's nice You can see just how many colors we can make from bringing these a variety of different colors together. And then the last thing I want to do is I want to bring in a little bit of contrast to the piece. Well, maybe not the last thing because I always say that and then I do something else. <laughs> so I want to bring in some contrast. So I'm going to I generally don't use black on its own, so I'm going to use some of the lamp black, but I'm going to mix it with something else. So let's mix it with the, let's mix it with the ultramarine and see what that does. I'm actually quite impressed with the paper. Um, it's definitely the same quality as at least um, this Strathmore that I've been using. Okay, so I'm going to make a nice deep dark without it being completely black. And as I said, I just want to add a little bit of contrast. It's always a bit of a trick adding, adding black or adding a dark in. Sometimes it can make you gulp, you know? Sometimes you're like, oh, I wish I didn't do that. But I just, there's something in me that just likes to push that contrast. Um, and if you commit to it, um, so if you're worried at first and it's just, you know, you don't think it's working, just think to yourself, well, I've started and now I have to commit. And so, Bring it down into a few areas. I'm not sure if I just missed a little bit there, um, but I've just continued adding in the black. And now I'm just kind of moving around with the skewer and scratching through in areas just to push back the heaviness of that black line a little bit. I want to 
to do one more thing. I want to play with the white again in a way that I normally would with the acrylic white ink. So oftentimes I'll come in with the white ink right towards the end and kind of get an irregular kind of border happening. Um, I know I can do that with the acrylic white ink. I want to see if I can do something similar with the made in gouache titanium white. Uh, so I have no idea if it will work out, but let's give it a try. So I'm just picking up the white with my brush. I'm going to go up to a corner. Um, the brush is not quite clean, so that's okay because it's actually going to pick up colors as we move around anyway. And then sometimes I'll come in and blend out a little bit so that again we get something different happening. Then I'll wash my brush, use my paper towel, move along a bit further. So through this whole process, I'm going to be washing my brush every time it comes in contact with a different color. Every time I kind of venture down into a different area. But again, if I do create accidentally a color that I like, I'll just move it around somewhere else. I often think in terms of large, medium, small, meaning if this is the largest um, of the this new color that's happened, then I'll have a small one somewhere and then an even smaller one, or this could be small, this could be medium, and I could really come in and do something bigger. Again, that's mixing with the color underneath but it's still got a hint of that green that was created. Okay, picking up some more white. This is still quite wet, so I'm gonna avoid that for a second. And I'm gonna come around. So what I mean by an irregular border is that I, I make little excursions into the actual design as well. So it's not just a straight out border. Coming down here. skimming along the edge of that black. Whoop, didn't quite get all the black off, so a little bit more gray is happening, which is fine. You see how this is kind of bringing it together, giving us a little bit of cohesion. It's actually pretty similar to what the white ink does for me. So that's pretty nice to know. Still quite wet up there. I'm not going to mess around with that area very much. I may bring some white over the top of it later on. Um, and you know, as I said, I didn't actually mean to create anything, but but my mind is always kind of moving towards abstraction and trying to create some kind of balance. Um, so having said that, I, I wouldn't say that this is completely balanced or a finished piece. Um, so I am going to stop here because my my main goal today was to actually just try the meat and brand out, try the watercolor paper um, and try the gouache with some of the other materials that I normally will use. Um, and I feel like I've achieved that. Um, I might just bring in a little bit of detail. 
in the pink, the little white. What I usually do at this point, if I am working on an abstract, is I'll take a photo and then I will have a look at that photo for a while and see if there are any areas that are either standing out too much or um, anything that just feels off or out of balance or if my eye is moving to one area uh, too much and that area might need to be pushed back. Um, and so that's where I'll kind of go from here. Um, just seeing if there's anything else that I want to do before I, before I turn the camera off. What do we think? What do we think? I'm just looking up through the camera. I think if anything, I might just wait for it to dry a little bit longer and just, um, push back a little bit more with the white uh, in some areas. And I'm going to actually get rid of um, my daughter's face there because that was just a little, you know, what shall I do? I'll play with this. Um, and I'm just going to, mainly because it's in the wrong place, it's kind of in the center. Um, yeah. Let's just leave a little tiny bit of that design that texture through there and then we'll take a little bit of this color over here it's really a good um, exercise too when you do move a color from one area to another it looks completely different when you put it next to different colors but this whole thing about creating neutrals out of the brighter opposite colors so Whatever colors are opposite on the color wheel, if you have a green and a red or a greeny blue and an orange, um, and then you mix them both together with some white, then you'll get a whole range of beautiful, um, beautiful neutral grays and browns. I think that watermelon was just distracting me. So it needed to be pushed back a little. And the dark, the black is kind of a little distracting as well. So I'm just softening that a touch in some areas. Overall, I'm really happy. That's an, a really nice play session. Uh, it's been a great way to explore the meat and paints. And I am excited to explore more with them um, and to learn more about them. So if you get a chance to give them a go, I recommend that you do so. And I hope this has been helpful to you and also helping you kind of see you know, what can work with what as far as in terms of other materials as well. Okay. Let me know in the comments below what you think. And have you tried Meaden products before? I'd love to, to know if you have and uh, what other products you might have tried as well. All right, see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Um, if you like this video, please uh, like and subscribe. And uh, you can check out my classes uh, in the link below and in the description below. And you can also check out my Patreon where I'm sharing every week um, exclusive Patreon tutorials uh, every month and live Zoom calls as well with my patrons. So I hope to see you over there as well. Okay, bye for now.